G'day everybody, uh, welcome to our uh, fortnightly live talk and we've got a lot of questions to get through tonight. I hopefully I'll be able to get through uh, most of them for everybody but I'll do the best I can. Uh, but as you know sometimes uh, you know we, we get into a bit of a de de in depth about the um, you know the you know the answers. So anyway, uh, I'll get started with the uh, first first question um, from Shirley. But just before I actually get started on that, can can people just let me know that uh, if anyone can sort of see me because I think it's all working. But uh, all right, well I'll, I'll get started. Shirley Henderson. Hello, Mark. I'm so glad to be part of your group. Thanks for coming on board, Shirley, and I, and I hope being being part of the, um, you know, the, 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 the group, or you know, I, um, and, and being part of the membership uh, helps you out. The, the the biggest thing that you know I really enjoy is being able to have a you know have have a job that actually helps people and horses. So it's, it's quite uh, she's quite anxious the fact that a leg quivers and the fact that you, you have to be very careful about what you're doing then I would be concerned that she's carrying more anxiety than than, than you're probably aware of um, so what I what I would be you know really thinking about is trying to understand the level, level of anxiety that she where, or, or where she's at um, Oh, hang on, I can hear you. Okay. The satellite is buffering a bit though. Yeah, it could be just a service thing. So, so someone... Hopefully it might get a little better. It could be just a satellite issue because um, we're on satellite NBN, so let's hope it improves a little. Okay, so anyway, back to the question. So, yeah. The groundwork and stuff, she might be responsive. I'd say she's responsive and she's sort of a soft mare, but, a, but an anxious mare. So she's a, <clears throat> a responsive mare. She's a, a soft natured mare, probably one of those timid type of horses. And she does everything that she has to do um, just to stay out of trouble, I guess. Um, and I'm not saying that you're getting her in trouble all the time, but, but sometimes they still feel that you know, there's certain pressures that they don't like or don't understand and it, and it keeps them anxious. So I think she might like you when you might be grooming her, when, when, when you're doing nice things with her that she likes and she knows there's nothing expected of her. But when there's something expected of her, um, I don't think she's um, at, a, at quite a, a good mental state to say, to, to be soft enough and confident enough to make decisions and think about her environment and soak stuff up without carrying so much anxiety. You should be able to ride your horse and, and be quite comfortable just to move around on it and you know do 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 all sorts of things and, and, and it, your horse shouldn't be worried about it. So um, yeah there's a lot of stuff you'd really have to go back through and and say even with the horsemanship you've done um, the style of horsemanship would have possibly had a lot of uh, um, I'm going to push you away and you move away from energy and that's a common thing in the horsemanship world is you know we create an energy and oh sorry this is on the ground thank you Shirley uh, I'm glad you've okay. um, so she quivers and, and stuff like that when you're working with her on the ground is that what you're saying? Um, if you're saying if you're saying that, then then yeah, we can we can do a fair bit to sort of help under saddle as well. But it all it all it's all going to lead to to better under saddle horse. So um, when you're on the ground, some of the horsemanship you've been doing is the horse moves away from pressure, and a lot of horses get very responsive and very what we sometimes call them soft. But what they end up doing is they become quite light. Now. If we present horsemanship in a certain way where we kind of uh, just add a little bit and then add more, add more, add more, um, what's going to happen is um, the horse ends up just moving away from escalating pressure and they're seeking refuge away from the pressure. 
Now, you can use a certain amount of driving pressure in a certain way, but you have to be very uh, thoughtful to get that pressure to make them think opposed to just react to the pressure. So what I try and encourage people to do in their groundwork is, is get a horse to think about what it's doing, search. And you'll start to see that as you go through some of the videos and stuff that I've got um, throughout the subscription is, you know, we're trying to get a horse to follow a feel out and instead of backing up and chasing it a bit all the time, we're just getting it to think. Um, so a lot of horses, especially the super sensitive ones that have been worked in a way that gets pushed away from energy quite a lot to them they're in a sort of state of mind that says i'm getting pushed down the pecking order when someone's doing groundwork with me and that's how they feel because it's no different to another horse coming in and putting its ears back and saying i'm going to come in firmer until you get away from me so if that's what the horse feels like in its groundwork, then it'll never let let down and, and become truly kind of relaxed in its work because it's constantly going from, if I move over here, so 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 what it's like, and, and the way I explain, I've probably explained this before in, in these live talks, is if you can imagine it, what's happening to a horse when you're doing groundwork, you, you're saying, go away, no, come back. And, and you're only saying, no, come back to say, go away again because a lot of times we're using our energy to say, say, you know, move the horse out there and then we face it up and then we move it out there. So we're actually asking the horse to come back and to say, go away again. It's almost like the horse can't escape, but it has to, and it has to come back and only to be pushed away, but then it can't escape again because we want it to come back. And then we worry about it not looking into the circle and things like that. So for the super sensitive horses, they, they sort of really get fried and get anxious and they hold a, a quite a high level of anxiety because it just feels like they're trapped in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sort of a, a, a smaller environment with something that's pushing them, but they can't really escape. And I know you probably don't intend to feel like that with your horse. And I know you're trying to not to be, you know, too big or, you know, you, you, you're probably trying to be kind about it but for the super sensor horse horse if it doesn't a super sensitive horses it doesn't take much to motivate them to move away from pressure and if they're truly feeling a little anxious about it then they they will hold anxiety so all that leg quivering and sometimes wanting to run off it's only her telling you that well you're moving me away from pressure possibly this is possibly but but this the you know the style of horsemanship that i see a lot is that that people are taught is is um especially to get their confidence is Sometimes, you know, if, if you ask, then you add more pressure, more pressure, and your horse moves. So, and I say if you've done a bit, that, yeah, that's, that's maybe one of the causes why she's not actually properly relaxing. So just to sort of change what, what you're doing is, is um, you know, maybe when you use your lead rope to ask her out, instead of maybe using energy to send her, maybe just keep asking her to go somewhere and just gently keep asking with the lead now don't don't pick up a driving hand don't pick up anything like that and just let her think and follow her feel out and then if she gets a little anxious maybe just draw her back soft and just stand with her and just just let her stand and connect a little and and do simple lessons of just getting to lead close past you and walk past you with her eye so she can just softly understand that she can go past you without feeling uh, that she's moving away from energy um, and just little exercises like that will help her just to go past and kind of go, oh, I just walked past someone and, and they didn't chase me off. I don't feel too bad. Um, and and that I, I think that will, will help her quite a bit, that sort of thing. Um, sorry, there's a... There's a little... Uh, cool. Um... Yeah, and and if you, and, and and basically when she comes back and and she's thinking on you, try and draw her to sort of reach and think and and sniff on you, and and just stand with her, and just till she starts to let down a little, and just don't ask as much of her in the groundwork. Just do a little bit, uh, spend a little bit more time where she can come down a few pegs and just relax, and then when you ask her to do things, you know, take away the driving pressure. I would say that in your groundwork, take away the driving pressure. Um, and I'm not saying to everybody, or just you can't drive your horses at all. There, there are times where you can sort of add a, add a certain energy and, and the horse 
shifts off it. But what you want the horses to, that energy to say, think over there, move over there. And there's times that we want the horses to speed up and we add energy. But what I try and show people is get them to add, uh, and add energy to the horse's thoughts, not push your energy into the horse to make them move. So, um, yeah, so really get her to lead past on both eyes and get it, get, make sure that she's soft on both sides. So, and, and just soft leading and, and then you can just let her out on a longer line and just send her out a little. If she starts to get anxious or whatever, you just kind of step back and put more draw in your body and just bring her back to you. Um, and just simplify everything you're doing on the ground and, and um, have more guiding versus, versus or, or directing versus driving in it. Um, and yeah, when she starts to kind of think out a little, and then, you know, you, at some stage you're going to encourage her to think out and want to leave a little bit, but you didn't push her there. You just ask her to go past on a long line and, and, and she just goes out a little. And when she goes, oh, she, oh, she's not paying attention, I might leave. Just let her go out on a little line. So you've got to save some, some rope so she can go out a little further. And then she'll go out a little further and go, oh, I've just escaped. And then you'll see if she really wants to escape or she just goes, oh, I've relaxed, I've got to escape a little bit. And then, but she shouldn't feel like she has to escape. And that's why when you change the way you direct her out, she won't feel like she's escaping from anything. And then you might just draw her back to you and just let her come in and connect and stand. So that, so being with you is just as good. And going out there doesn't make her feel bad. It's just her going somewhere, not getting chased to say, go away. So, and, and that's, I guess, another way I explain it to people is when you're directing a horse, you're not pushing into them you're saying go over there and then you direct all your intention into your leading hand thinking in the direction you want your horse to go not pushing at where you want the horse to move its body to move away from so so if i pushed into somebody that to the person and that to the horse wouldn't matter would be go away from me get away from me but if i said go over there the whole the person the person go oh yeah i'll go over there because when I do that, the person looks and goes like that. And that's what we're trying to show our horses. I just want you to go over there. I don't want you to go away from me. But I'll leave it there because I think if you try changing a few of those and you got back to me in a little while, um, even if you thought, you know, for anybody out there, if you do, I can do a, a, a live, um, which I'm going to try and work on more of a live. I've done a few um, virtual live lessons. So basically I've done a live lesson. Someone's been there to video the horse. I've been doing a talk over live lesson um, and just fixing things throughout the lesson. I'm trying to make those uh, live lessons available so they can be on, on the uh, subscription. So people can also see the live lessons um, on the subscription. But the other way is you send a video through and just I'll I'll uh, critique it, I'll work, you know, talk you through all the bits that you're doing, and then you can, you know, I'll send it back uh, on, on, on the subscription, and you can watch the video, and, and it can help you uh, with your horse. Because sometimes in these talks, it's, I can get a basis of an answer done, but, but the, the, the reality is, is sometimes the, the detail of how the person is operating and, the, you know, the horses is, is really important. Sharon, my... Uh, my mare hates being ridden. <laughs> yeah, Sharon, I know your horse now. I actually had to, had to, had to think about it and, and, and remember the ride uh, that I did on your horse uh, in Victoria. And this hasn't changed uh, over the nearly 15 years we've been together. I shouldn't laugh because it's kind of a painful thing when you've got a horse that you've had for so long and you just want them to be happy. And um, I'm laughing in a, in a nice way. I'm not laughing in it. In you know, it's just, it's just, yeah... It's, it's, it's something that we really got to help, you know, that's why I really try and help people understand their horses to help their horses feel better around them just so those horses can start to go, well, actually being around people's not so bad. Um, uh, I rode her at El Costello. I'm trying to think differently instead of always accepting her no. My question is, if you were going to change my horse's perception about riding, what would you do? Well, that's, I guess, a bit, a bit I can sort of have a little giggle about. I don't know. I'd, I'd bring out my crystal ball and I'd say, okay, the hardest thing is what would I do? Um, now, I know Viv wrote a little comment um, earlier on. You're listening there, Viv. Uh, sorry, it was a comment about her horse. 
because uh, in the last one of the last question and answers, I answered Viv's question on a, on a shutdown horse. Now, a shutdown horse and your mare, you saw so what what, the, what what you might remember in at the the clinic that we did with your horse is there was a lesson there where your horse and it was groundwork started the search, but we we put your horse on its own and walked away and stood there and your horse didn't move at all it was just like i'm i'm not going to move and it's just sort of like like a statue it may as well have you know um you may as well have fed it some 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 cement in it, in, it, in its food because it was just kind of stuck there frozen and then what we did is we kind of got the audience to clap a bit to see what what and i think viv would have been at the same clinic i think maybe or um and yeah got the audience to clap a bit <clears throat> excuse me <coughs> excuse me <coughs> um and she went whoop and she stayed frozen and then all of a sudden she went nobody's here i'm gonna start thinking and then she kind of went off but you know she was kind of a mare that was a frozen shut down mare that just hates being around people and the, and the hardest thing is to get them to think again so we we trial just um stimulating you know things in her environment that she started to be a little concerned about and when she realized there was no one around she had went well no one's around and we saw where where her thoughts were and she left somewhere else and then once she realized that she could move and she she could escape then uh, i could i could work on 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 sharon to, you know help sharon go and connect with the horse so with your mare she's been in a human environment and she's never actually accepted humans and she's sort of stayed shut down, so it's kind of a, a habit in her. You imagine going to work, you can, I just set up a work scenario, you go into your office, and there's someone that, that you just, as soon as you walk in, you kind of, you, you kind of, you feel your, your, your whole, oh, I've got to be near them today. And, and, and there's something about that person that you don't really, you know, but it's never been rectified, and, and, and you're just tense for the whole day, and you just can't think on, you know, it. it but all it would take is maybe some sort of meeting with that person in a way that goes, oh, I didn't have to worry about that. And then the next day you go in and, you know, you know how we carry weight on our shoulders and sometimes we can carry weight for days and days and days unless we talk about it with someone else. So can you imagine a horse that as soon as a person comes in or looks like they're going to ride it, the horse goes, right, here's the bit I hate and it's never ever been rectified. So, so it's become a strong habit in the horse and the horse just goes into that state um, and even if you tried to be the best rider, the horse is in a frame of mind that it's not actually really recognising that you're trying really hard to do the best you can because it still just goes, oh, there's the pressure of the bit, oh, there's the legs, oh, I just, I just don't want to do it and I'm, I'm elsewhere and I'm carrying anxiety but I'm just kind of blocking it all out. Um, so if I owned your horse, I would probably have to start back in i'm just going to go and visit your horse each day now um so what what would i do or what would i like you to try and you know what what what, what would if i was you what would i do just go out with her without an agenda for a little while and just just go out and, and just meet her out out you know in the paddock and just like i said to viv just go and catch your horse in a way that's not catching it just walk up to it and watch it watch exactly when she starts to tap out so if she's with another horse in the paddock and she just looks like a normal horse walk in until you see her go oh, all right humans and what does she do okay as soon as she sort of changes what she's you know doing and she starts to look a little anxious or look away and and go hang on a minute i, I might look for a departure and as soon as you see that change of thought and she starts to go oh here's, here comes um someone into my paddock you know i'd i'd step back and just give it a little space and say i don't want to as soon as you start to kind of start to feel like that i'm gonna release that by stepping away and say i'm not going to come in while you're like that okay and you might have to do that every day just watching her a little and just getting her and then and then and then maybe walk walk away a little and then maybe come in again and and just just approach and retreat at a distance see if she starts to communicate at a distance and and, and starts to look and think a little and then um you know after that i i just uh 
I just um, build on that that interaction just in the paddock. So then riding, how do you make a light riding? Well, everything has to be broken down in a way that's like when I, you know, if she starts to interact with you a little and you so, and you take away the idea that you're going to work her and just see if she's going to connect with you, then basically when you get to a stage that you're putting a saddle on her, um, is it when the saddle goes on that she taps out? Is it, or she just tapped out once you've put the holder on and let her, let her anywhere, you know? So um, do some things that she likes too. So you got to, like with some horses, I think it's good, especially the ones that have been shut down and just, you know, find a spot that she likes to be scratched until she goes, oh, wow, I really like that. And she seeks it. I know that mutual grooming for horses that block people out is really good because it, it gets a good feeling in a horse and they go, oh, yeah. And then they start to hunt it and look for it. And then, and then you know, might walk away a little bit and she'll come over to you and say, can you give me another scratch there? And, and, it, and it enables her to interact with you in a way that shows her that you can do something for her that she likes. Now, it, mutual grooming and is going to help her come out of her shell to be interested in you, but it's not going to help her like being ridden. So you still have to fix the, you know, the way you are when you ride her. So things like that will help her come out a little bit of a shell, out of a shell. The next thing I'd be looking at is um, um, when you start to ride, I'd be I'd be um, I'd be putting my foot in the stirrup and see that tension, and she'll go, and then don't do anything, just wait there, and she goes, oh nothing happened, and she might just think, relax a little, and then step away from her and say, thanks, I I think you just relaxed a little, uh, and I'm going to reward you for that. I'm not going to you know I'm not going to let you go la la la. I'm only going to get you to start getting a little anxious and then I'm going to, nothing else is going to happen and she's going to go, this is a bit different and she'll start thinking a little bit. Or even you could start to sort of put your foot in the stirrup and just give her a scratch on the scratchy spot that you found that she likes and she goes, I don't mind that, you know, and then you might step up on her and, and, and just sit on her and just get off her and do that. And that might take some time, but 15 years of having a horse that doesn't like being ridden, well, you got to donate a bit of, you know, a bit of time to maybe showing her that I'm just going to make it simple and then when you first start to walk her off and things like that it's going to be thanks for moving release thanks for moving release and then you might get off her and you might just sort of build on on her um, enthusiasm and confidence and then start to you know work later on on getting her to search and think and give her something to think towards and things like that so it's a hard one because i'm not right there looking at her but going right back when you first walk in the paddock with the interactions with her make it so she's um you know you're really listening to her instead of just you know doing things you think she may like but maybe she doesn't like some if she doesn't like being scratched when you you get away and don't don't you know you might find somewhere else but maybe you know find ways of getting her, her interested in you okay it's a it's a it's a kind of a yeah what would i do and then it will be basically every interaction i have with her i want to make sure she's engaged and i'm paying attention to her level of anxiety and if she's connected so you know meaning she'd have to have a thought somewhat towards me when i do the next thing i don't want to you know zoning out or looking away when you do put your foot in the stirrup or when you sit up on her you want her you want to know that she's thinking with you and she's okay so um she lo so yeah i just saw your little uh, thing shirley she loves to be with me um she loves to be with you as long as she loves being uh, guided by you. I'd say she might like you, um, and that's not a question in it. Like she might like you, but she mightn't like education because um, it could be presented in a way that she's not comfortable with. So, yeah, and that, and that happens quite a lot. A lot I, I see a lot of people; their horses like them, but when the person puts the educational hat on or the guiding hat, then they, they get a little anxious. So, okay, what's our next Heather? We have a recent six weeks addition to our little herd, six year old Arab gelding. Whilst a bit aggressive with other horses initially, especially around food. Now just quickly, I'll cut in there because I won't answer that again uh, in a second when I get on to the rest. But 
initially especially around food when you say initially especially around food uh, food's an interesting thing and, and and in an environment where horses get fed all the time especially if you're in a drought or they they don't have a lot of a lot of other pasture you know or grass in the paddock um horses can become more tricky around food but when they're in a paddock and there's there's feed and they get a bit of you know um they that can dissolve a little bit uh as, you know because some horses come out of an environment where that's their ration food and and they do get quite protective but uh, after a while they can actually relax a little bit more in a normal herd situation where you throw a few biscuits of hay around the paddock and they kind of find their place pretty easy without a lot of you know fighting and toing and froing but you know horses that have had allocated feed <clears throat> all their life um or the best part of their life can be a little difficult and sometimes it, it, it kind of slowly uh, dissipates a little bit once they 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 they're in you know they 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 got food available as in grass and stuff like that and they're not constantly waiting for that food that that they've got to eat and fight over kind of thing. So, um, he settled in well and is responsive and gentle to handle and ride. I was told he could be tricky to catch in the paddock. And what has proved to be true on occasion, no worries, I thought. I've worked through that before. It's not bad, maybe a trot or walk off, and I always draw him after a few minutes, but I'd like to change his thinking around this. Once he's with you, he feels connected and will follow about without a lead rope, etc. Without a lead, etc. Uh, but there is a wariness in the initial approach that seems like a habit. P.S. I try not to look or think like a mountain lion when I do, when I do go out in the paddock. I'd appreciate your thoughts. Well, I hope you don't look like a mountain lion anyway. Um, so my thoughts are exactly kind of going back to Sharon's question at the start of the answer for Sharon's question is is go out and from a distance be more aware of of your horse heather um so walk out with your horse as soon as you see that horse start to think like it's going to walk off or that that the, the, the you know you might walk out and the horse might first flick an ear to you and then it might go and you might keep walking and then it goes well i'm going to start to leave now so as soon as you see the first interaction as in the first connection of that horse thinking towards you then that's when you kind of stop and release a little and, 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 and back off and, and not put any more pressure on the horse because you've got to then let it think about what it's going to do next. Now, if, you, if, you, if there was a first little connection towards you and, and you didn't listen to it and, and you kept walking the horse, well, I paid attention to them and they're still coming. I'm going to look for my departure because that has been a habit and it hasn't been fixed. So the horse will go to the habit that it knows, especially if that habit is its idea and also sometimes created through anxiety or worry about, you know, the next part of what you're going to do with them. And some horses, you know, don't like pressure. They don't like the, the groundwork. They don't like the ridden work. You know, there's, there's all these things. But also some horses know what they like and know what they don't like in the sense of, oh, that's right, Heather's still a good doing. She's doing the best she can to make me feel better, better than the last trainer. But it's still not as good as just hanging around these horses, and because I like these horses, and I've you know never had this kind of herd thing, and I really like it, and I'd rather be here than. Um, so yeah, we do have to strengthen our relationship with our horses. So they do like being with us, but with the catching side of it, I definitely pay a closer attention to when you when you walk out in the paddock. That's most important, and and usually just sometimes by working on that approach and retreat at a distance where where the where where the 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 um the first interactions happen is the crucial part in getting a horse a little interested and and when you go out there sometimes just you know what like there's a little pony in germany a while ago that i i i he was blue and quite a lot of people from all over germany were quite interested because he'd been through it to a few homes and he you go out in the paddock and he was like right here comes a person and then the other thing was once you caught him once you tried to lead him away he, he learned to pull away and take off so there's a few things we're trying to fix but to catch him we just sort of looked it walked out watched blue and he went oh i'm ready to go now here come some people and he kind sort of sneak around some other horses and he'd try and get the other horses sometimes 
on on his bandwagon and things like that but and 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 i'll just kind of answer this question as if you know we're thinking about your horse to give you some ideas heather but so what i did is i just went saw that first interaction with blue and then walked over to a quieter horse which i knew i could go and handle and just pat it on it and or just just spend a bit of time with it and then blue was kind of like what are you doing over there yeah. mm. and then what i actually did with him is i actually knew i knew his best mate because I could start to see which horse he'd always go to. And his best mate wasn't as anxious as Baloo at getting caught. So I'd just go and, well, I'm going to go and spend some time with your best mate. And I did that. I just went over and spent some time with the best mate. and then, But but also, all in all in this time, I was just intermingling with the herd until Baloo went, oh, they're not so bad. And then when he wasn't thinking his normal habit, which his normal habit was kapachoo, or, take, or getting another horse and then take them and... Um, he started to soften a little so then i could work a bit more on approach and retreat with him um so when you know, when he started to get a little anxious we'd just stop and i you know was the whole time the owner was beside me and i was trying to show her how to watch a little harder when your horse thinks about you know you see that anxiety go up and it's thinking should i should i should i should i should i go there or should i go away you step away and say i'll oh, just take the pressure off and then sometimes that'll draw that i might go with them thought until he got a little interest and we could walk up and, and handle him a little and he was soft about it and and he got you know quite good that we could walk in the paddock with him and uh and handle him and, and he was okay about it but yeah heather i'd, I'd just kind of walk up as soon as you see that you know a, a change in your horse's thought just step back just give it a little space or step back give it a little space and then walk off like you're not interested. I might do something else in the paddock and don't put all your attention on that particular horse at that moment. Just get a first interaction, walk away, do something else, pat another horse and just be around the herd a little bit and make it go, oh, oh, you know, be a bit more interested and just change the way you do things like that. And after a while, you know, you'll go in and, you know, catch your horse don't do a lot with it maybe scratch it a little first do something that it likes a little so it goes oh that was pretty good i've got something good and it'll remember that first interaction where it gets something okay from you and then you might sort of lead it off and and do something with it but but don't always go out and catch it every day maybe just catch it put the holder on take it off and walk around and pat another horse and just just be amongst it, you know and just first of all listen to your horse second of all start to break the old habit um by by changing things up a little bit and I think that'll help, opposed to going, you know, I've had so many people that have, have contacted me saying, I've got a horse and it's hard to catch. I did a lesson, it worked. So for f this many weeks, this many months, the horse was okay to catch, but then one day it just went pear-shaped. And I said, well, what'd you do? And they said, well, I, w I went and pushed my horse around for a while until it, you know, hooked onto me or, or joined up with me. And then, um, and then I, I um, you know, did that. So, um, what happens is the horse f was forced to kind of like it was the what happened is it is it is it was too hard not to be caught. So it finally, when I will, I'll just come up to you then because the pressures. I uh, but it actually the tension was still in the horse and it still felt bad about it. So after a while, things came out uh, in the horse that really um really sort of was always in there it's just obedience over over overrode it i suppose it, it, the horse was being obedient but it was still troubled okay so yeah um i think um shirley i've just i oh, sorry i'm back on because it was a question you you've just said rosie is dominant yes that's probably one of the keys why she gets a little troubled um is is dominant horses uh, will feel a little bit funny about education because especially if it feels like it's a pecking water thing like I explained before so um, yeah so next so try all that Heather and then maybe let us know down the track how you're going with it and if if you need to tweak it a little bit or, or if things change a little you know get it get a little bit better Debra I've recently purchased a five-year-old off the track thoroughbred gelding never raced only trialed I don't have a lot of experience retraining uh, off the track thoroughbreds and kind of feel a little bit lost 
where to start. My trainer is helping me, but I would like to do some more things on my own. We've done some groundwork and written work and he's very willing and motivated. Would you be able to give some pointers as to what things to do, on, what things to work on? Also, uh, what are some things I could do to get him used to the resident donkeys he's so terrified of? He's quite spooky being a young, inexperienced horse. Thank you. So I'll start with the donkeys. Um, now, anyone who's a psychologist or a doctor out there or a doctor of psychology or anything like that can correct me on this. Um, it's graded exposure, I think, or rated exposure in, in, in psychology. Um, so with the donkey, you know, maybe have it so he can he see it for a little while um, but you don't want the donkey being able to kind of run at it and go hello and and freak him out too much early in the early stages um, so something if he was on his own maybe have the donkey in, in view but not not so much um, uh, you know just just not not so much um, uh, that he can get right up on the fence with the donkey and just 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 give him a little while and, and as long as he's got another horse or something so he is he you know i guess i don't know if he's on his own or not but if he's on his own he might find it a little tricky but if he had another horse and just could see the donkey after a while you know and each day for a little while he'd probably start to see it and see it and see it and go oh well it's a you know it's been over there for a while maybe i'm not so scared of it because you know and it'll and the donkey will hee haw a little bit and he'll start to go oh it's making that funny sound <laughs> that I don't like but you know it's done it a few days in a row and it, I'm, I'm starting to get used to it and uh, the other thing you can you could also do is um, you could you know even if you wanted someone to help you lead the donkey if your donkey's leadable um, is is just you lead your, your, your thoroughbred so what I do is you know what I you know if you if you're working I'll, I'll give you an example if you're working cattle or sheep or anything and your horses sit, suddenly see them and go well what's that if those if those animals that the horse is um scared of were all running towards the horse they'd probably freak out and run over the hill especially if you're riding a you know a green horse or a, or a horse that's kind of you know fairly anxious and doesn't like these things so you could get somebody to lead lead the donkey away and just follow it you know you lead your horse and just follow it and be with your horse so you've got to have some sort of connection with your horse so your horse can feel okay with you and safe with you if you've got that then then new environments with scary things don't affect your horse as much because it's, it's going with a confident herd member and when i say i mean herd member but i mean confident that's the most important thing is that there's a confidence in you that that you know that the horse has put a confidence in us that is sometimes nearly more confident than if they went out with with one of the the stronger herd members who gives them confidence that's what we'd like anyway so um follow the donkey just get keep that horse following it till it's actually going oh i'm pretty confident you're going away from me and i'm following you and it gets a little interested and things like that and just just slowly you know get it to a stage that it's coming up and sniffing on the donkey or something like that and and you know that's that's a a way you can do it in hand in a in a, in a human environment with humans around and uh and then the other way would be slowly you know bringing them closer together until until the horses um and the donkey have sort of you know that the, the, the horse is more comfortable with the donkey because the last thing you want is you know something to happen like the donkey gets a bit excited and is not as confident with the horse and goes hey I'd, i might follow you around and the horse goes i can't deal with that and end up over a fence or something like that so yeah give it give it some days of slowly um you know so the exposure is is first at a distance and then slowly breaks down until till they're a little closer together and 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 you can see your horse is more calm but you can break that down by following the donkey you know so you know set it up as i say i just say said get someone to lead the donkey but but you know set it up in a way that you can get that donkey to go away and get the horse to follow it and and just become curious like if following cattle or following sheep once 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 those scary things turn and go the other way um they they pull and they make a distance and then that horse gets brave enough to to kind of start to follow and then and then they become more confident. Um, so what things can you do with your horse? Well, there's a couple. Just, uh, you know, just get your horse to follow the donkey till it's quiet. Um, now, 
there's so many things. I don't know if you've been on um, on the videos and watched some of the videos. There's so much things. Anything, whether it's whether it's the way I train a young horse or some of the touchier horses, and you you'll kind of know what, what you know what category your horse fits into. By the sounds of it, he's going to be a you know round eyed, nice thoroughbred that's quite interested and in, and in soft thoroughbreds are very friendly horses and really nice to work with. And so. Um, if he's kind of one of those horses that haven't been completely blown in the racehorse industry, if he's only been started or trialled, um, maybe you've got a good chance to have a quite a soft-minded horse that hasn't hasn't really had the full negative effect of, of possibly being um, put in a very intense environment um, and, and kind of uh, cooked, I suppose. So, yeah... One thing I say to people is, is just like I've said to the others, is, is just get a connection with your horse, get them interested, get them soft, get them want to, want to be around you, uh, just in the way you walk into the paddock. And I'll just, I won't, won't go through it all because I've gone through it a little bit with the, with the other answers. It's just, you know, notice your horse, notice what it's, what it's thinking, how it's feeling uh, when you walk in the paddock and um, also have a bit of time that's for them, as in, you know, they're, they're, that's the scratch times, that's the time you're just out with your horse just to make it feel a little better. And, you know, when you let them go, I, I got in such a habit over the years of, you know, I've got to go to the next horse, got to go to the next horse. And, 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 and just standing with the horse that I just finished with and just coming down another peg and doing some stuff with it that it liked and then letting it go was, you know, was, is quite valuable and often missed. So, so those things are, are important. Um, and, and, yeah, when you go out in the paddock, just like I said with the others, listen to it and, um, you know, the first interactions of when the horse is starting to think towards you or, or be a little interested and then acknowledge those and, 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 and um, instead of just going up and chucking your holder on and doing what, you know, leading off. The other thing with all your groundwork and stuff like that, um, you know, there's groundwork and there's groundwork. A lot of horses, especially off the track horses, I really try and get them to lead solid as in lower your head while you're walking forward, lower right down while you're walking forward softly, back up, lots of good forwards and backwards without even thinking you've got to go and send your horse out on circles and things like that. You don't even need to do that if you've got a horse leading nicely. So leading nicely means I could swap leads and I could push it out there with that hand and it'll go out there with that lead and lead back over here and backing forwards, backwards, forwards, um, till the horse, um, and there's a couple of videos that I've, will be putting on and, and ones that I've, I've put on um, if, if when I just recently went to a, a thoroughbred stud and you know leading was the biggest problem you know the horse couldn't think softly through the field of a lead to the right so it had really bad hind foot issues um, so because it couldn't actually com communicate with me very well on that side and then you know the other one wouldn't go into a vet crush but then when you put under pressure and pulled on it it sort of rear up and run backwards so you know, leading is a valuable tool. Um, and this is sort of, you know, a horse has got to feel good in the halter, feel good in the head, okay? And and because it's, it has been trialled a little bit, you'll find they'll run into pressure just a little bit. You know, they would have had a firm hand on them. Um, so luckily you got it new, so you don't, you know, it might take a little less to get it, but lots of forwards and backwards lessons, you know, forwards, backwards, so that horse can comfortably walk into a backup, walk into a backup. And that'll really help your horse out a lot. Um, and yeah, I'd be doing more of that. And then in the riding, the same thing, you know, just, you know, getting good steering on your horse. So so when you, you know, sometimes, you know, your trainer, I don't know that some people will say, you've got to get your horse soft though. So they'll give you miles of flexion to do. And sometimes it's good to get a horse to look with their own think and soften, but you can very, you can overdo it thinking, bending them around your boot each day as you get on them is going to be good because sometimes what it'll do is just make them harder to steer later on. So. Um, what I would do is, um, you know, instead of circles when you ride, corners, you know, just pick up a turn, send your reins, let your horse out. As soon as that horse finds that turn, let it out so it gets interested in turning because it's a pathway to a nice feeling and the horse finds a new straight line, walks off. Uh, if the horse gets a little anxious and starts to think away, where well, you can take a turn and redirect its thoughts a little, get it back into your direction and and, and, and centre your reins and, and always work from centre when you ride so um, the rein comes into activation and then releases 
so the horse starts to go, well, I can feel that, and they get interested in the reins and things like that instead of kind of riding, moving your hands all the time. Also for horses, young ones off the track, horses, any horse, in your riding, one thing at a time, get get the accelerator working so when you squeeze the horse goes, don't micromanage. If it's, if it's not confident, it might want to stop all the time. So if it stops all the time, you don't get in the habit of going, I'm just going to keep you going by kick, 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 kick. You might just allow it to stop and then say speed up again in it and, until it can hold the walk and, and things like that. So many different things in the way you ride. But the one thing I do say is lots of forwards and soft backwards and, and just turns just so that horse knows that right rein means turn right, left rein means turn left. Um, and tighten the turns up so the horse can do like a tight turn as if you want to ride around a tree and go in the new direction. Um, so the horse can do lots of different turns and the tighter turns don't bother it. Um, coupled with lots of good quality backing and when, when those things work, the horse can move a forward off your legs and then you leave it and it'll stay in a nice walk and, um, and it can turn, then, then, then you can start to build on, you know, let's maybe ride, try and think about circles and figure eights and fancy stuff, but, um, yeah and good quality leading apart from all the connection stuff like you know keeping that horse's thoughts with you or being able to guide the thoughts away that's very important but um but all the things the basics that horses need you know um some a little saying that i've kind of got sometimes when i think of it at clinics is i'm not if someone came to my clinic and they wanted to go out and float around with their horses and and just have connection and maybe one day just ride bridleless or whatever well i'm not going to say no you shouldn't do liberty i teach horses to lead with the rein and do this because i've done so but what i do say is maybe before i teach but before i help you with your with what you want to be around your horse let's see what your horse needs now some people say well i'm never going to sell my horse i'm going to keep it forever so it doesn't really matter I say, well, it does, because one day you might end up in hospital and the neighbour has to come over and take your horse to the vet or maybe maybe anything could happen. And I see too many horses in a human world that struggle because they don't understand the, the, the simple basics of just how to follow a lead rope, how to follow a lead rope somewhere, how to, how to pick a foot up softly or, you know, just all these things that, are, 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 like, I think are important. And then once you've got those things that the horse needs done, then you can go and work on what you want, the, the you know, the, the selfish desires of, you know, floating around on a magic carpet kind of stuff. You can do that, you know, but if there's a responsibility to the horse and, and being in, in, in a human world and being able to cope with certain things and then and then and then we can we can we can do the rest as well. So it's just sort of, you know, keeps I like keeping in the re, the real of things. I'm a bit of a realist when it comes to things like that. Um, sorry, I just nearly nearly went off a, off a question there. Bridget, hello, Mark. Uh, thank you for advice on the last question and answer. I have another question regarding my very green mare, the one that I have had a little trouble with forward motion. This is an interesting question, this one, as I was reading them before um, about, about her. Um, she sounds fairly green, so... I have been practicing riding her mostly in the direction that she would like to be traveling in. She will move out at a nice walk and sometimes trot in that direction. The problem is that I'm encountering is that she always seems to want to go to places that can be possibly dangerous to me and her. When I pick up a rein to say that door is closed, try again, she suddenly stops completely. And when I want to move in another direction, <laughs> Um, stops completely then will not want to move in another direction except the direction she wants to go is there any exercises that I can do with her in the small round pen to help me communicate with her when we are out in a larger space yeah round yards are hard for horses that don't want to go because they just sit in there and you start kick kick and if she's a horse that you go kick kick and she gets cranky and doesn't want to move then you end up in an arm wrestle if you've got another safer small paddock or something it's it's much better to have just a little bit of space so you can work on acceleration now i get this problem a lot and when i'm helping someone personally with it um we can sort of try things and and trial this and trial that and, and you know so i'm kind of going to have to give you a bit of a rough try this 
two things. You can use your reins a lot instead of your legs. Um, so sometimes we use our legs and our horses very, a horse can block legs out very easy. And that's why trainers and people go to spurs and whips and because they've blocked the legs out, well, I've just got to get bigger. Well, you can be a little creative with your reins. Um, and, and, you know, I come across some horses that will bend around to your boot and they say, yeah, but when I just hold the turn, the horse will just bend around to my boot and stop and won't move. Well, not if you keep enough pressure on that horse on the rein to say, well, bending is not working. Okay, so what what you may want to think about doing is is have a half safe environment that doesn't have dangerous things. I know don't know no one you know not everyone has an arena or something, but at least set it up that the place where your horse is going to go is kind of like a bit of a dead end or where it wants to go is a you know the yard gate or into the yards or something. And uh, she probably doesn't like being interrupted. She's got a strong thought. She wants to go there and that's it. And she's kind of got used to blocking out people why can be lack of confidence things like that and i sometimes think there's more lack of confidence issues than there is i just just want to be be piggy or something like that um so what i would would do is um go somewhere where you can get her to go forward because that's the answer forward off the leg so i'm glad you got to go forward but encouraging to go towards the thoughts you haven't got her to leave that idea alone yet she so 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 when she gets there she goes well you know i'm just going to stop here then and i don't want to go anywhere else so you might say well that door's closed <clears throat> and if she just bends around and stops and doesn't move you just keep a little pressure on the rein as in keep keep feel on it and she'll go oh hang on a minute uh uh and and, and just lift it up a little higher and she'll go oh and and then maybe when she's kind of searching and struggling a little and going, oh, hang on a minute, you know, I'm not going to stay here forever with that bit of pressure there. Um, you know, and you might bump your legs a couple of times too just to keep, just to see if you can get her thinking. She might just break out and shift her feet. As soon as she shifts her feet, let the rein go. Good, thanks. And then try again, pick up a rein. If she just bends and keeps her feet dead still and you just keep a feel on the rein as if, her bending is not releasing the pressure and she's going to go oh that didn't work hang on a minute i'm a little stuck here and then you might bang and cluck a little just to say hey you know think about getting out of this little bind and she might go oh clunk and get out of the bind reward her for getting out of the bind not for going in your direction not for going anywhere just for getting unstuck and just see if you can keep repeating that and if it doesn't work, I, I, you know, the, the next thing is the next thing, the next thing I would tell you, but I, I would encourage, I would try that a little bit. And, and she gets in a little bind, you get her out of it. She gets out of it by moving the feet. And then after a little bit, she might go, oh, every time I get up stuck at this spot where I wanna be, I'm end up in this little bind. And as soon as I move my feet and think a little bit, I'm out and then you might, so you'll get to a stage that you'll say bump, bump, bump and she won't do anything so you kind of put a bit of steer on to see if she'll steer out she doesn't do anything we'll just steer keep the rein on gets in a little bind let her out let her go and after a while she'll have to kind of shift her thoughts and her feet to get out of that spot and then you just sit on her so basically um she might start to search in a new direction and go somewhere else and then if you sort of get a little stuck you just go okay by the way i'm going to get off you and lead you somewhere that i can get you to move because I know coming back here is good and you don't mind it and then you might get her to trot up or go to where she wants to go but make sure it's an environment that you know is a little safer just in the round yards hard because there's sort of no direction that the horse can get a bit of movement in um, I, I would um, without going to bigger guns and trying to you know and, and I don't encourage people just to go to bigger guns and force them through because some people have actually got themselves in a pickle you know, well, not that I've put them in the pickle, but I've heard stories of when they've been told to go, just get bigger, and then all of a sudden that horse went, pump, and uh, and those those people got catapulted off, or, you know, the horse did something pretty dangerous or got really worried, uh, especially if it was kind of actually a kind of a more introverted horse that was just too nervous to go forward, and then all of a sudden they put so much pressure on it, just, you know, took off. So I try and think my way out of these situations and get the horse to think their way out of the situation. So, yeah, but that lesson of, of, of her, she'll start to not fight the rain so much too. And But just be careful because if she starts to go, I can't cope with it, I shake her head and start to hop up in the front, means that 
she's never been put under any pressure in the reins and that's where um, you're going to have to go back a peg and just don't worry about going anywhere on her just in, and this is probably where I would say maybe try this one in the round yard if it looks like you know she's going to fight a little then put her in the round yard and say okay well I'm just going to take a rein and you're going to look around here and she might fight and wriggle a little and I'm going to bump and you're going to think and move a little and then you just do that until she just realizes the path of least resistance is just looking and following the rein and then you add that you know you add that leg and say move and this is probably the only time I might allow people to sort of no and a few other times but is is do two things at once is that's when your horse is completely stuck and you, you don't want to just you know tear its head off or anything so you you start to bump a little with your legs to see if it's going to start to search and find a way out of that rain um and and just until she stops resisting the rain in there and just follows the rain around and follows the rain around and then what when she gets softer and interested at following that rain around you just let her out and just let her walk as soon as she stops instead of getting right in with the legs and just trying to hunt her up you might just take her on a turn she gets stuck a little more and she just then she'll turn follow the rain around and 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 so you're kind of killing two birds with one stone you're getting interested in walking out on a straight line but you're also showing her that if she's gonna um be a little stuck all she has to do is follow that rain around and we can go out in that nice straight line so going forward is going to be a lot better for her than stopping and this is where it will be a little more difficult when she stops because she could there is resistance in there but you're not trying to be hard on her or anything like that you're just trying to help her follow her rain that's all you're really trying to do um so bridget i hope that gives you a little bit of a, a help on that and um yeah as i say it's i i, I clutch at straws a little bit um yeah megan i uh sorry i've got another bit of time for another one um stella Raya. i i'm i'm sorry if i don't get them all done tonight because um i i just got to be careful we don't go over the hour too much because it gets a little long so where are we at megan if you have time for another question milo will reef his head forward and down early in our riding sessions just after your just after your ideas on what to do with this i feel like i'm reeling in a fish when i have to bring his head back up so it's just at the start okay and then he starts to think a little bit and then he goes oh okay righto um so right at the start of the lesson, be kind of fairly methodical and kind of be aware that you know he's probably probably going to do it. So a lesson I try and, and I think you've seen this one before, is a slide up the rain lesson. But either way, you don't have to do the slide up the rain as long as you can take up the reins nice and smooth. Try and get him to make his own pressure. So be a bit more thoughtful when you pull on his mouth on his head or anything whatever you um got on him um so pick up on the reins like you pick up the weight of the reins he'll feel that coming and he'll go mm. and and that's where your timing comes in to say i'm i know that's going to happen so don't get on him and go right i'm going to do this and he reefs and and then you go oh i wish you didn't reef get him ride him thinking that well, chances are he's done this the last few rides. I think he's going to, when I do something with the reins, he's going to reef. So be prepared to know it's coming and help him through it. So there are some people who say just put a turn and, and take him over that way, and that, that can work too. Um, but I think with him, I just sake up, you know, I just pick up the weight of two reins even while you're sitting there before you even ride him forward and just pick up the weight of the reins as they pick, pick him up slow and careful. So he goes, oh, here comes the reins coming and he might do that. But, but as he does that, that's when you kind of set and firm a little and lift up and he'll go, oh, boom. but you've got to kind of draw it up like that. So he goes, oh, hang on a minute. I just pushed into that pressure then. And that's why you've got to be thinking about it and kind of anticipate it a little. But if he doesn't do it and he just rolls on back soft, well, he's not going to create his own pressure. So you just got to be more mindful of it and treat it as if it's you think it's going to happen. But if it didn't happen, he's not going to, you know, it's not like you're going in 
to, he's going to create his own pressure. So it's not like, and that's that's what riding's about all the time. If I was riding a horse I didn't know reefed, and I picked up the reins and it landed on my hands, well, it'd feel just the same as him, okay? Because every horse that I ride that I'm not, you know, that I don't know, even the ones that I know, I'm still picking up the reins in a way that allows that horse to either soften or create its own pressure.